Well, hello, YouTubians. Welcome to Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel, where we also do knives and knife, knife sharpening on the Wicked Edge Gen 3 Pro. This is a follow-up to part one of the difference between the Lightning Elite OTF and that's $35 and the SOS knife that is very similar that is $99 at bladeops.com. Here is the Lightning. Here is the SOS. Oh, so similar in shape, size, and that's the reason I purchased it. Because I love the Lightning for its cheapness, and you don't really care. You know, you can beat this thing up. But just the handle style, everything I talked about in part one will be in the link below. There will be part one of sort of playing with the differences and why I chose it and how I did my research. I'm a bit of a micromanager when it comes to things like that and spending money. So, especially in the old joke Biden economy. All right, I don't know what it is for the rest of y'all, but I'm, I do my purchases very carefully. So this is the SOS, and this is the Lightning. $99, $35. It is so similar in size, shape. I love the blade on the SOS, or the uh, Lightning Elite. It's the two-tone black, but the SOS has that type of blade shape. I had to wait. These were sold out in the drop point. I didn't want Tonto. I didn't want Dagger. I wanted something as to replace this. Not really replace it, but it is the cheap Chinese 440, they say. It could be something else. Who the heck knows? We don't know unless you... Somebody like uh, the channel Love Them Knives, he's testing it. He's testing knife steals. He isn't. He's sending them to people he knows to do Rockwell hardness. And if it says D2, they can determine, is it really D2? And the Rockwell hardness, of course, will tell you what's the heat treat all about and things like that. So I would love to see him do a cheapy little lightning, but he's doing all these China knives from all over the place. So you need to check him out too. Love them knives. Uh, he's really getting into that. And it's going to be his claim to fame because nobody else does it. He has the connections somehow, some way. I believe he's in Florida because I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. So here we go. The SOS video number one, part one, was kind of comparing and why I chose this. I specifically chose this because it is a step up from the Lightning. The SOS is over twice the price, but you're getting the D2 and you're getting a milled aluminum handle, which we're going to take apart here later in this video. But I initially did a sharpness test in part one of the video and this was a miserable fail, miserable fail. So if you get one of these and it comes with a little case, which is pretty damn nice compared to a lot of these cheap Chinese knives, they got really terrible cases or, or uh, belt sheaths. So it goes in there really nice. It's compact. It doesn't have a bunch of those giant plastic buckles on them. So, I just got done sharpening this on the Wicked uh, Edge Gen 3 Pro, which is sitting right here, 
diamonds, ceramic, and lapping films. I started basically checking the angle on these and they were north of 20 degrees, 21, 22. They didn't, this particular knife, you can tell from the blue tape, I'm keeping the blue tape on there because I don't want to get mixed up with my second SOS. Uh, this, I'd say was somewhere like maybe 22 or and then the other side was a little bit different. So I can tell, and you'll see in the, the microscopic video that we're going to look at the blade edge of both the after sharpening and then the before the sharpening. Uh, they, they failed miserably, the stock edge. So here is the Wicked Edge after I got done with it. All right, that's the way it should be. And this isn't this stupid printer paper. This is like glossy newsprint from a Northern Tool catalog. This is super thin, super cheapy paper. And that's what I call sharp. And then of course, I have no arm hair left and it just shaves it right off. So that's the way I want it. And I like to get a little mirror, not totally mirror, just a polished edge. Um, on an EDC like this, I'm not going to spend hours working on working on the uh, mirrorization of an edge. I just want it highly polished. And I took it from, let's see, I think I started at 80 grit, so I could really just reprofile these knives. 80, then 100, 200, uh, let's see, 400, 600, 800, 1000. From 1000, I went to a 1200 ceramic stone to a 1500 ceramic stone then back to diamonds again and i went uh, 1500 diamond 2200 diamond then up to uh i believe 3000 diamond and then i finished it with a three different lapping films i believe it was nine micron five micron and then one micron lapping film and I finally got it just the way I'm, the way I wanted it. Nice, nice and sharp. I'm nice and happy now. I'm never happy um, if I can't, if I can't just do that. You know, I mean, all the way down to that, from, from the very bottom all the way up to the very tip and I'm even going to work on this some more I'm even going to work on this a little bit more but for EDC it will work because really as I said in the first video I'm not gutting a moose I'm not skinning a deer I'm not doing anything all I'm doing is carrying this to cut stuff on my boat one-handed operation is what I love about the OTFs. Having it right on my side. I'm going to show you my carry options next. After we take this apart and put it back together. I want to look at the internals. And at the same time, I want to clean this and lube it. Because, let me move the tape here. It's got a lot of blade or, uh, yeah, blade twang. And that's those springs in these Chinese knives. You don't get blade twang in, I'll leave that little piece of tape on there so I don't get them mixed up. Let's see if you can hear it or not. I'm gonna hold it lightly because your hand will insulate the handle. I can hear it distinctly. 
you don't get blade or spring twang in a $300 OTF. If they sold a $300 one, now they'll sell them to you all day long with loose buttons where the button just rattles like crazy. This one, no rattling, no nothing. It is seemingly quality built. It's only got four screws and that's probably because it's small. Seemingly quality built for the $99. I mean, it's twice what the Lightning Elite would cost. And the D2 is okay. I'd like it to be a little step up from even D2, but D2 is the new budget do-all steel. So let's take this apart and clean it. And I put dry lubricant, let it dry. And I'll tell you, when I did that to my Lightning Elites that had blade, had spring twang, I mean, no, it's not a Guardian Recon, okay? But, I mean, we're talking super smooth after I got done with it. So let's take this apart and see what this thing looks like inside. Here we are. We got the lightning with the screws out. And we got the SOS with the screws out. Tail of the tape. Here we go. Let's look at the spring according to, yeah, according to the Lightning Elite, it's about the exact same size. You can see the milling marks from the milling bit. And over here, you can tell this is just cast. Oh, I forgot to talk about how I'm going to try to eliminate the blade or the spring twang. I used some stuff that a subscriber sent to me and my Lightning Elite, it didn't twang that bad. But I still use this stuff, Frog Lube. And all I do is take a minute amount. I lubricate those spring coils. And that seems to solve it. Alrighty, here I'm at the point where I'm going to put the frog lube on the spring. And all I do is just dab some on there. And rub it into the coils. You can't even see it when it's all done. Nobody likes spring twang. Alright, this is how I carry this SOS and how I've been carrying all of my knives, especially my OTS. I got this elastic band here that goes around my 511 black belt. And I'm telling you, I wear this, nobody even knows anything. If you're worried about, you know, oh geez, they're going to see a knife. Well, I don't give a shit what people think, you know, number one. And these I get on Amazon. They're made for actually pistol clips. And I take my OTF with the, the clip on the outside. I don't really need a clip. And I take it and I put it in there like that. So that's where it sits. So I'm not doing all this, um, you know, pocket lint and everything. And I even have some that have a closed end. So when you shove it in there, the end here isn't even sticking out. So that's how I carry it all the time. And nobody even notices anything. They don't notice a damn thing. And if they do, they don't even know what it is. And then I can just grab it, pull it out. There you go. You pull the clip out a little bit, slide it right in, boom. All right, what you're looking at here is the D2 SOS out the front knife. After the Wicked Edge sharpening, you're looking at the very edge of the knife. Trying to focus it in. 
This is highly magnification, but you can see how clean that edge is, except for all the dust. Pretty much polished out. This is brought up to about, let's see, this is about brought up to 14,000 grid at one micron. Started at basically 100 grit diamond there's a there's a spot right there right in the middle of the screen basically it's like a little scuff not bad for kind of a quickie job i spent maybe an hour on it disregard all the particles so i started at 100 grit at 20 degrees each side worked it all the way through the stone progression and ended up from 200 one or no actually I started at 80 grit that's the very edge of the knife right there you can see below it how textured that d2 steel is below the edge to the naked eye you can't even see any of those scratch marks I started at 80 grit I wanted to get it to 20 degrees it was not 20 degrees then I went from 80 to 100 to 200 to 400 to 600 to 800 to 1000 hit it with a little bit of uh, ceramic stones at 1200 and 1600 grit then ended up at approximately let's see I did a 1500 diamond a 2200 diamond and then ended up polishing it up the rest of the way at 3000 grit then hit it with the lapping film to polish it up. I believe it was 9 micron, 5 micron, and then 1 micron. Because that's the only lapping film I could put my hands on. So there you go. That is, I don't know, 800 magnification, I believe. And next I will try to show you the stock blade. This is the after, and next I'll show you the before. Alright, this is the stock blade edge. As I said, disregard all the dust particles and things like that. But as you can see, lots of scratch marks done on a belt. The initial video, part one, of the SOS knife, you could see very clearly in that video that this is really far from sharp. In my test it wouldn't even cut newsprint paper. So there's a little bit of the before and after. I can see the difference. I don't know if the untrained eye can really tell, but I can definitely see a difference. This edge on there seemed to be north of 20 degrees, 21, 22, didn't really match on either side. So there you go, that's basically the before. I know it might not be able, might not be anything super radical that you're looking at, but at the same time I like to show you before and after.